so welcome again to our electrical class and for the last class we looked at some of these things we look at them looking mostly at electricity production and energy production so in the last class we looked at what is electricity and we said the scientific study of electron move from atom to atom all right we said what is scientific principle and these are universal Acceptable theories, concept, mathematical formula developed and sometimes proved in a particular field of study. So look at scientific how we have to establish these things from day one. We said what is a circuit? And it's a group of electrical or electronic devices that are placed together in scientific order. That's why we look at the word scientific for level four. I would say it's a group of theories, mathematical concept principles. And we use it to operate load. Alright? Where can we find electron? Electron is all almost in our natural environment. Alright? What is an atom? The smallest constituents of a unit that possesses properties of chemical elements. This is just revision. If you want to see, you have to look on the first video. And this is our atom. This is actually our atom. And what we are really interested in the atom is electrons. Negative charge. All the same. Right? Electrons. Right? And we look at electrical material, we look at conductors, allow electrons to flow easily. Or uh, if you look at it from an atom perspective, there's a one to three electrons is called the shell. Right? Insulator, material does not allow electrons to flow easily. And these materials are about five to eight electrons and they're the shell. And we look at examples of these. Semiconductors, material need a conductor and insulator, right? Need a conductor and insulator, right? Let's say a revision, a revision, all right. All right, these material can be a conductor and insulator depending on their physical, electrical, or chemical exposure. Component that are made from semiconductor material, diode, integrating circuit, transistor. Photovoltaics and etc. So, uh, revise and revise. So, we are moving pretty fast. Continue. Alright, conductor material and it's liberalized. Insulator material. Warren, this is all your meeting data. Tear pop later. Alright. Circuit. 
So it is the force of the pressure that develops that cause electron flow. So we can have high voltage, that means the voltage is flowing very what? Fast. And then we can have low voltage, that means the voltage is flowing very what? Slow. Slow. Alright? Then we have current. How is the current measure, measuring amps? And the rate of electron flow flowing through a conductor. Remember, you know, the higher the current is the bigger or thicker the conductor. Am I right? Yeah. So if we have a small amount of current flowing, then we need a thin conductor, a thin piece of wire. So? Mm -hmm. And if we have high voltage and high current, we need a T. Remember this when we talk about rate, when we calculate rate is something over something. Yeah. We're talking about more than one here, you know? Mm -hmm. Rate versus time or time versus distance are rate. Alright? Resistance now measured in ohms and resistance now of force. Force. Oppose the flow of the electron. So which resistance? It oppose the flow of the electron. Resistance can be good and can be bad enough. Because, for example, welding. Welding is actually resistance now. Mm -hmm. The iron that they use to press the clothes is actually resistance. The kettle that they use to warm up the water is actually resistance. The curling iron that your girlfriend use to cool my hair. The blow dryer that I use and the glass, to hot the glass, is resistance because all that goes in. So we have resistance where it's applicable. But those resistance where it's what we call intentional resistance or deliberate resistance, we want those things to be created. We want our iron to get that. We want the heater element in our auto sensor to operate. So the auto sensor can operate within 30 seconds of the vehicle's turner. We want our heater element to warm up the car seat. When you sit in the car seat and you get cold and you turn on and up, in the high unit, you can remember, and you make the seat get hot the heater element actually warm up the car seat. In your back glass, where you see those lines going across the windscreen, the rear windscreen, those are actually heater element to warm up the heat windscreen. So resistance is important. Uh, anyway, we have resistance, we're going to take our Digital multimeter, and we're going to measure the ohms. If it's voltage, we're going to measure our voltage. And if it's current, we can measure this with current, but it's kind of difficult. We have a next meter, a clamp on meter, a meter, we do the clamping. And in most cases, we can measure the current through the scan. We can measure the ohms. We can measure the voltage through the scan, if the scan is good enough. Alright? So the three elements we are looking at voltage, current, and resistance. You have to learn the resistance, you know, uh, so no longer you use it. Alright. Alright, stop. This is very important. What? What is the power needed by an electrical glue to do its work? People will remember. I told you that. When I start to use the terms, you know, if you don't know more the terms, you'll get a big problem. We talk about load, what are we talking about? Give me an example of some load. Speaker. Speaker. Radio. 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 On. Light. Light. Uh. So all load, all load. Got to use some electricity. But what is the power needed by all electrical component? And if you want to know the wattage now, what equal V times A. So we have to know the push or the force of the voltage. And we have to know how much current is in the circuit. And remember what you saw, people. Remember the fuse of amps ratings. That's all. So if we know the what, we can do our calculation and find out how much amps is in the circuit. And if we know the amps, then we can know what fuse to put in the circuit. Because everything will come together now. So this is a problem from year one. If we don't understand certain things, we start lack back in a problem. And this is what beat us many times, you know. When we have to study a subject, it's where we move so fast. And we now master, when we say master, master the basic stuff there. So if you're installing a fog lamp, if you're installing a on, if you're installing a lighting system, I can say that a speaker, Remember the 
conductors that they use now. The conductors also come in voltage ratings and also amps ratings. The conductor. So the conductor really deal with what? Can you remember now? When you use a conductor, you know, they want to know how much voltage you have to use that will run through this wire. And how much amps that will go through this wire. You understand? What they are really telling you is the power the wire can manage. You understand? Know So you can tell you how much power the wire can manage. When you purchase a switch, the switch has voltage mark on the back and it also has arms. The switch is showing you how much power it can manage. So these things are extremely important. Alright? Define ohms. Ohms now, the rate of current is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance. Yes, that is the definition of voltage. The rate of current is directly proportional to the voltage. What we are saying? All right, scroll. So we look at the definition of ohms. Ohms law. Ohms law. All right. What to some people? This is a formula that we will work with: voltage, current, resistance, and V equal I times R resistance. R equal V divided by amps and current I equal V divided by K. So this is a formula that we use for Ohm's law. Um, in our area of automotive, I don't think from an academic perspective we might use this formula based on what we are doing. But we don't we're not gonna depend on this so much. We are going to use it from a more academic perspective. But the, ones that we, the one that we really need is the what one. Because so we got to install speaker, install formula, and install things on the vehicle. You need to know the fuse to put in on the circuit. You need to know the what size conductor you should purchase. You need to know what switcher should purchase. You need to know these things. But this, we will still use this for the most part. We can also use this if we want, for example, if we want to confirm something. So, we know that the voltage in the peak is what? Um, 30.5, most likely, if the antimony is working at 12.5. Um, we might say a solenoid that is pulling about 2 amps, uh, 1.8 amps, and we want to know the resistance of that solenoid, then we can use this Ohm's law formula to um, figure out what, um, how much resistance that is in that solenoid. Alright? And uh, yeah, that's what. Good. How do we make electricity? How do we create electricity? How do we generate electricity? Because electricity is there for us to generate or to make or to create. So how do we do that? Interesting, do huh? So, one of the most common way and popular way of generating electricity is a process that we call magnetic induction. Before we go on to the theory, this is a disassembled alternator. I have right here. Disassembled oh, alternator. And then this will be the magnetic pole. This will be the magnetic pole. This will be the magnetic pole. And when this is the magnetic pole, whenever this magnet turns within the current winding, electricity is generated. Richard. All, right. All right, so here, this would be an alternator that on the vehicle. This is what we call the rotor. And whenever this rotor is magnetized within the coil winding or the stator, electricity is produced. And if you look right here on this ring right here, you notice two brush. Two brush would be on right here. And these brush should actually supply voltage to this magnet right here. This magnet is what we call an electromagnet. So basically, all of our electrical power plants in the world, every single one of them in the world, all of our windmill, all of our, um, what we call it, um, geo, um, third arm thing there, water energy, where we use dam, what you really have is an alternator within these things. Alright? 
So all of these things produce electricity by a method that we call magnetic induction. All right? So, when we generate electricity, we generate electricity by a method that we call magnetic induction. And I did a very good alternator right here because that's how the alternator generates electricity. Because we are looking at motor vehicle application. So, Faraday's law, what is the law? Faraday's law of induction, briefly, Faraday's law is a basic law of electromagnetism predicting how a magnetic field will interact with the electric circuit to produce an to produce an to produce an electromotive force. Alright. A phenomenon known as electromagnetic induction. It is a fundamental operating principle of transformer, inductor, and many type of electric motor, generator, and solenoid. Alright? So when you come on to these things, talk about Faraday's now. Alright? Good. So how magnetic induction really works in our case? We have a magnet. We're going to turn it within a chi winding. When we turn it within a chi winding, electricity is produced. So this is our this is our alternator produced electricity by magnetic induction. Alright, the other one now. solar panel or the photovoltaic cell it made from a semiconductor device or whenever sun or whenever light not sun whenever light energy may contact with this semiconductor device electricity is generated so if you should look on the back of right here you notice we have a black and we have a red so we have a positive and a negative so from this positive and negative wire we have two batteries where this positive and this negative wire charge. All right? So we can generate electricity from photovoltaic cell. But the word photon, as what I said, photon electrical electronics is another um, science by itself. All right. Right here. Scroll. Right. Right. Put photon to right here. That's it. Photovoltaic cell. A solar or photovoltaic cell is an electronic device that converts the energy of light directly into electricity. So it is not heat, it is not heat from the sun that causes electricity to generate. It's actually the light energy, alright, by the photovoltaic effect, which is which is physical and chemical phenomena. In the form of photoelectric cell, defined as a device with whose electrical parameters such as current, voltage, or resistance bear when exposed to light. You remember what material photovoltaic cells are made from? Con conductor, insulator, and semiconductor. Excellent. Want well, to see how these things are coming back now? And here we have a semiconductor photovoltaic cell of the sunlight. Alright, and this is the cell, and these are the various parts, and this is the symbol that we use. This is the symbol, electrical symbol for uh, uh, photovoltaic cell. Just want to look like a capacitor that was by an easy to light. But the thing is a bit sharp. Alright, so we look at magnetic induction, we look at photovoltaic cell scroll. Alright, stop. Remember these things. This thing the right here. The wire, remember this, the right here. Photo cells. Semiconductor material again. Whenever it gets dark, it allows this light to turn on, the street light. Photo cell. Photo cell. The reason why I highlight this, if you should look at some vehicle dashboard, if you should look at some vehicle dashboard, you will see something on the cell on the dashboard. Anytime you turn it on, 
when they might become down and like become in the evening, they park like her down. Mm -hmm. It is the exact same technology. The whole thing they do, they take it off right here, they like, and put it on the vehicle dashboard. Mm -hmm. And no matter what they should cover the dashboard, you see the park like her down. Photo set. So it's actually semiconductor material when it exerts light, it generates electricity. As I said, the third and the, the area, uh -huh. and we always put one on a day to cover the shoe. We put, put it over here, we don't have to sit in the light, come on, but because they want auto, mm -hmm. the light come on, and that shoe would say they should the light on. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> And remember, we said the voltage, the current, the resistance, it can be vary when the cell is exposed to light energy. Uh, that's wrong. So, that's why we want to establish certain things on day one. Alright. Alright, and then we look on our light emitting diode. Here's our light emitting diode. Alright. And here's our photo. Um, we have photo diode and we have photo transistor. So in many times is when the light actually touch the base of the photo transistor, it generates and it allow electrons to pass through. Or photo diode, um, similar. Alright, so these are the things that they use. These photo cells, similar semiconductor material, like photovoltaic, all the things are different behind scroll. Alright, thermocoupling. Alright, thermocoupling. And I need to do a research on some video. Thermocoupling, also known as thermoelectric, is an electrical device consists of two dissimilar electrical connectors forming an electrical conjunction. When a thermocoupling produce, produce, produces a temperature dependent voltage as a result of CMAP effect. And this voltage can be interpreted by measuring temperature. I don't remember if the exhaust temperature sensor is a thermocoupling. Tell me the truth. Natural is a thermocoupling. I need to do a research. I probably somebody can research me. Care exhaust temperature sensor. Thermocoupling and see what happens. Alright, scroll. Yes, the thermocoupling, they normally use it in a computer. So the computer gets so extremely hot and it turns out is actually a thermocoupling installed on the server. Alright? So we have two dissimilar materials, iron and copper. When they expose it to heat, electricity is free. That's wrong. Chemical reaction now. How many times? Chemical reaction. Alright, chemical reaction. Electrochemistry is used in chemical reaction to cause electron to flow within a conductor. Well, when chemical reaction is driven by an electrical potential difference in electrolysis of a potential, potential different result from chemical reaction is an electrical battery fuel, battery and fuel cell, it is called electrochemistry, electrochemical reaction. Unlike in other reactions, electrochemical reaction, electrons are not transferred directly between atoms are higher. Our molecule, but via aforementioned electrically conducting circuit. This phenomenon is what so, uh, distinguish electrochemistry reaction from conventional chemical reaction. I right? this is it by Wikipedia. So, uh, as far as electrochemistry study of chemical process that cause electron flow, the movement of electron is called electricity which can be generated by movement of electron from one element to scroll to another in a reaction known as oxidation reaction. Right, this is another website that has chemical reaction. Scroll. Alright. Good. So here that we have when we talk about producing electricity by chemical reaction. On motor vehicle application, we are looking at batteries and we are looking at fuel cell. So right here, batteries separate positive and negative charge by using a chemical reaction. Chemical potential energy is converted into electrical energy. And this is a diagram of all. 
battery. All right, now when it comes down to fuel cell, where we actually use hydrogen as a fuel, see what happened? We have oxygen on one end, hydrogen on the other end, and when the oxygen and the hydrogen combine together, electricity is created by the fuel cell. And the waste product is hydrogen and water. Hydrogen and oxygen give us water. So this is a typical fuel cell. Alright? So your fuel actually needed is hydrogen for electricity. Yeah. So hydrogen can be used as a fuel to generate electricity when you have a fuel cell. This is what we call a fuel cell. Alright? So. Alright, piezo electronic crystals work. Alright, piezo electronic crystal is electronic charge that accumulates in certain solid materials such as crystal. Alright. This not sensor right here. This not sensor right here, I show you earlier on the TH2 of them. This not sensor is actually made of piezo electronic crystal. And piezo electronic crystal will be what a semiconductor. So this semiconductor material here, when it's coated at a cylinder block, when knocking starts to take place because of a uh, pre-ignition or uh, probably like that, uh, when you roll this and cause my appearance, it starts to generate electricity. Alright, and this is the schematic diagram of the non sensor. This is actually the sensor. And this is actually the Here we are. The two components on this vehicle that are responsible to generate electricity is the battery and the alternator. The battery generates electricity by chemical reaction, by chemical means. And the alternator generates electricity by magnetic induction. So it's basically converting mechanical energy into electrical energy. All right, so if we should look on this battery right here, we'll do some basic inspection on our battery. And we want to ensure that the battery is firm, the terminal is tight and uh, but this terminal right here is dirty so this terminal needs to be clean all right so this battery a defect right here is dirty and right here we have a side glass and inside this side glass here is green and once it is green it is okay so if you should look in the side glass inside right here you would see a green a green reflector good and that green reflector is showing that the battery is okay all right well this terminal will not stop me from doing what i'm supposed to do so the first thing i need to check i need to check the battery voltage i already calibrate my multimeter so we have the grounds we have the plus and our voltage is 13 all right this is surface charge turn on the headlamp turn on the headlamp for 10 seconds one two three what this is doing, this is removing the surface charge from the battery. Alright? And I would assume that this is 10 seconds. Right, so let us measure it now. Alright, the voltage. Well, it dropped, but a surface charge is still there. Alright. So, we identified the two components on this vehicle that are responsible to generate electricity, which is the battery and the alternator. We're going to ensure that this vehicle here have good grounds. So, here we have a positive side of our battery. And let us check the shock tower right here. Supposed to get good grounds. All right, good. Um, the other part of the vehicle that we need to check to ensure that we are getting good grounds, well, this one, this one, this one, this one. is the cylinder head, because this is where the ignition coil and the distributor is. We are getting uh, excellent, good grounds. And where the alternator bolts it up on the cylinder head, Good grounds, all right, and we must also get good grounds on the transmission or the gearbox. Excellent. So as you can see, this vehicle is grounds out properly. So we have to ensure that we have good ground. All right. The next thing we want to measure now, we want to measure how much voltage this alternator is producing. And now we have to start the vehicle. Start the vehicle. Ensure it is in neutral. Start the vehicle. All right. So let us check it from the battery side. 
And we are getting 13.9. This is good. Yesterday we get 13.8. This is good. This is show that the alternator is working. Turn on the lights and the AC. So I want to know if we are supposed to maintain this charge. Light and AC. Alright, the light is on. And AC, let us see if we're still getting it. Excellent, the light is on, the vehicle is on alone. And we're still getting so this is excellent. It drop a little, but we're still getting good voltage. Alright. And let us see what we are getting right here now. We are getting 13.94. There must not be a significant drop between what we are getting at the battery and what we are getting at the alternator. So we're gonna measure the alternator direct output. So put this on the negative terminal. This part of the alternator, we call it B plus or battery positive. This is showing you the direct voltage that is coming out of the alternator. And let us see now. Wow. The direct voltage is actually 14.8. So what he's saying that when the, the voltage goes through these wires, by the time it reaches the battery, it drops to about um eight to eight, about point seventeen voltage so that is still acceptable a point seventeen voltage difference is still acceptable let's check right here again all right yes there is a drop the battery thirteen point nine four and the alternator direct output